Hey guys, this is Matt, and I'm back with our first Shooter on Rails tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to get your camera on Rails, and also how to keep the ship inside the bounds of the screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm talking about. As you can see, the camera is traveling from waypoint to waypoint across the terrain. And also, if you try to go out of the view of the camera, it's going to stop the ship from doing that. So let's take a look at some of our game objects. If we go into our scene and take a look at our waypoints, this is what the camera is traveling to. So they're going to start here and then rotate to face this waypoint and travel to it, and then rotate again and then travel here, and so on. And the way that the waypoints are working is that they have a box collider on it. You can see the wire mesh here. And as soon as the ship with its sphere collider hits the box collider, since it has its on trigger turned on, it's going to call a method inside of the checkpoint behavior script, and that's going to cause the camera to uh, go to the next waypoint. If we look at the camera object, we can see that inside of its script camera movement, it has a list of waypoints. And so the way that this works is you just take each waypoint and then put it into that list in the order you want the camera to visit it. And then it'll move there with this speed. That's about it for our game objects. Let's take a look at some code. All right, so here we have the camera movement script. And just at the member variables, we have a, a static variable here called camera movement. And this is just going to be a lazy singleton for the rest of the project to use uh, to get the position of the camera whenever we need to. And here we have the list of transforms that makes up our waypoints array that we saw earlier. And we also have the float of speed. So let's go down to the start. Uh, the first thing we do is we set up our lazy singleton. And then we're going to make sure that all of our waypoints face each other. So this is just to, to make sure that the ship will actually collide with the waypoint and not somehow go around it. And the first thing you do is you take the first waypoint at waypoint 0, and you do a dot look at, and then just set it to the position of the camera. So it's looking at the camera. Now you start at the first index, and then go to the count, and the current waypoint, waypoint x, is going to look at the previous waypoint, x minus 1. And that's all you got to do for that. All right, so now we go into the update method. And this is where our camera is actually going to be moving towards the, uh, the other waypoints. So as long as the waypoint list is not empty, then we're going to calculate our step size, which is just the speed of the camera multiplied by the delta time that has passed since the last frame. Now we're going to calculate the move vector by normalizing the transform of the camera minus the first waypoint in our list, which is the waypoint we're traveling to. So now that we have the movement vector, we're just going to update our position by doing the current position minus the movement vector times the step size. Now we need to figure out how do we get the ship moving inside of that view. Well, since the ship is actually parented to the camera, it's going to continue that movement forward to the next waypoint. So the ship is always going to be moving with the camera. So we just need to manipulate the movement inside of the camera. First, we have another lazy singleton ship movement that gets uh, instantiated in the start. And then we have a fixed update method. So since it has a rigid body on it, we're going to be using this fixed update. The first thing we do is we set the velocity to zero in case it uh, actually got some motion from hitting the terrain, which also has a rigid body on it. And then we are going to do our user input. So if they press the down arrow or they press the S key, since we allow you to use the WASD or the arrow keys, then we're going to do the dive. Since we plan on putting this on mobile devices, we want to be able to use the accelerometers of the phone in order to control the movement. So it's kind of the, the phone becomes the controller. So we get the y acceleration of the phone, and if it's greater than negative 0.25 and it's not equal to zero, then we're going to also dive. Then we have similar inputs for the rest of the directions. 
So let's take a look at the dive method. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set a boolean that calculates whether or not the ship is trying to go outside of the bounds of the screen. And it does it by calling this world to screen point method on camera.main. And all we need to send it is the current position of the ship, transform.position. If we're only interested in the Y, we're going to take out that component. And if it's less than or equal to zero, meaning it's below the bottom of the screen, then we're going to set it to true. Now we're going to use this ternary operator right here to say if past bottom of the screen is true, then we're going to do zero. And if it's false, then we're going to tell it to go down at negative 0.5. And we do similar things for the rest of the methods. So ascending, we're just going to calculate if it's above the top of the screen, send it the current transform, get the y coordinate, and if it's greater than screen dot height, then it's going to be true. Okay, so the only thing left are the checkpoints. And these checkpoints, the way that we're going to make them is that they're going to spur events as well as guide the ship. As long as this camera waypoint value is true, then it's going to be used as a waypoint for the camera. And that means it's inside of the list for the camera movement. So inside of on trigger enter, the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the colliding object has the tag player ship. And if it doesn't, then we're going to ignore it. Otherwise, we're going to do uh, our load scene. So if it's the last waypoint, we want to load the next level, but we're not going to be going over that part. But if it's a camera waypoint, we're going to set camera waypoint to false so that this doesn't get executed multiple times in case the ship flies back into this collider. And here's where we use our lazy singleton camera movement to call next waypoint. So let's go back into there and take a look. It's a very simple method. All that it's going to do is it's going to remove the first value from our waypoints, and then it's going to call the start coroutine rotate. Rotate right below it. We're going to set this Boolean repeat to true so that as long as it's rotating towards the object and not facing it yet, it's going to continue rotating towards it. Then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the original rotation before we uh, make our modification. That way we have something to test to exit our loop. And we're going to get the direction of the rotation. So we're going to get the first waypoint, the position of it, and we're going to subtract our transform position, so the camera's position. Now we're going to get the new direction for our rotation. And we're just going to do a rotate towards, we're going to give it our forward direction, the direction we want to rotate towards, and then the time step that we're rotating it in. And this just makes it so it's a little bit slower by dividing it by two. We're going to set the current rotation of the camera using quaternion.lookRotation, and then we're going to give it the direction we're looking at. All right, so now that we've rotated our step, we're going to check that the original position is not equal to the current rotation of the camera. Because if they're not the same, then that means we still need to rotate. So then we're going to call this yield, wait for the end of the frame, and we're going to set repeat to false. But as soon as they are equal, so that you're done rotating, we're going to set repeat to false and exit our while loop and exit our coroutine. And by making it a coroutine, this allows us to take it out of our update method. So we make our update method a little bit more lean. All right, that's about it for putting your camera on rails. See you next time.